got to a limit. I like getting money, I got time to get it. Talking on me, so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in the dash, and the stick is with it. And I hit the four or five on the wet side. But I'm from the east side, this how we slide. This how we ride, yeah, yeah, this how we ride. Don't bro, no lead, no lead. Make it easy like one, two, three. Go, 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 on three, two, one. one. A fly T can't see me. Swish, yeah. Falling from the first whistle, we go all in. All in. And one. Yo, 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 what's Numbers good, guys? What is happening? Proud of me, yeah. Yeah. No big proud of me, so I throw proud of her. She know I stuck to the plan and in I stayed the wild, man. Now it's been a while, guys. What's going on? <laughs> there it is. Just from me to game, 200K I'm gonna get it. Bitcoin. Get it 500K Don't do it for Bitcoin. fame, do it for the one. <laughs> for the one. Ace with some dog, my dad is my love. If you want to drive, she get what you want. Who we got in the room? What's happening? Keep the music live. Pump for the algorand. No, it's called pump the algorithm. Pump in the algorithm. Be sure to pass through and like the stream. What's good, PC Shed? What's happening, people? Who we got in the room today, guys? Man, I've missed it. It's been a while. George Patterns, what's happening, my friend? Yes, we'll have a look at XRP. Raki, hola, how you doing? Carl, Greg, what's good? Crypto Magpie, what's happening? We got members in the room. We got Patreons in here. Sack Trades, Thad, Awitas, the love is there, man. Harry Bumchin, what's going on, bro? What is good? What's happening, Appa? How you doing, my man? West Coast in the room. Soul Cow, what's happening, my brother? Hope you're well, my man. Wicked, wicked. We got love in the room. What's good? Espresso Addict, how you doing? Back on the grind, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, just waiting for a few more people to pass through to the stream. We are back on the grind. The hunt starts now. Okay, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. These are the most key important days in the week, which is where we're going to see the patterns develop and the moves away from these zones when the market maker decides to show his hand. That's what it's all about. Anybody new welcoming into the stream, mad love and respect. Okay, you've come through to the Traders Reality channel. So I just want to make sure we're waiting for people just to pass through. Procrastinator, what's good, my man? Yasul, man, how you doing? Taza, what's good? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you, Crypto Mad. Should I wait for a better price on VET or FOMO right now? You've answered your question, my friend. Okay? The fact that you said FOMO right now, that's not a good sign there, bro. Be mindful. Okay, let the move come to you, my friend. Sit tight. That's not financial advice. That's just talking common sense. Do not do what the retail trader does. Okay. Neo, what's good, man? Love from Dallas. How you doing? Wicked, 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 wicked. <laughs> Christopher Pyfalsa. <laughs> what a guy. No, pump the algo. <laughs> Not in a sneaky way. Nah, man. Nah, it's all about liking the stream. That's what it is. We're pumping the YouTube algorithm. That's what it is. Yes, dollar yen has done and served us very well. I've closed up all my positions on dollar yen, trying to catch a retrace back up for a continuation back to the downside. Okay, then, ladies and gentlemen, it seems as though we've got people passing through. You guys have checked in with each other. Everyone's all happy days. Now, let's have the story. Okay? One more time for anybody new welcoming into the channel. And all my pattern watchers, mad love and respect. Welcome to A Trader's Reality. My name is Tino. Let's have a conversation, guys. Let's get with the flavor. Oh man, my computer's running slow. I've been killing it on this computer. So let's just kill the music just ever so slightly. As always, ladies and gentlemen, the start of these streams is always going to look at what Bitcoin is doing right now. And we have had some wonderful movement by Bitcoin to the upside. Okay, if we take a trip down memory lane to understand what Bitcoin has been doing, it's going to put things into perspective for us. Okay, I need to kill some of my tabs on the screens because they are causing a little bit of an issue. So I just need to be mindful of that. Here we go. Okay, then. So what have we got? 
Well, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin has come away from a zone, as you can see. Now, this is the, the one hour time frame and you can see the beautiful range that they have accumulated from. Now, in the previous streams, we've been talking about Bitcoin doing certain things at key notable areas. And the key number was the 62 zone. It seemed as though the 62 range itself was a point in the chart where the market makers showed more aggressive moves to the downside and they returned back up. That's the market maker giving you the clue that they are building longs below key notable areas to break through those zones. And the only reason why is because if you notice at the part of this point in the chart right here, you can see where they initiate a rise, a retrace, then a continuation out. This is how the pattern forms, okay? And these sort of things happen all the time, guys, okay? This is where you're reading intention. So Bitcoin then completely blasts away from the zone and recovers all the previous vectors in this zone right here. As you can see, this point right here in the chart, Bitcoin made the recovery from it. We knew at some point they will come back to that point and then they've made that return. We know we want to see price coming back to these points, but we don't know when. And this behavior right here throws retail traders off because they're trying to work out is Bitcoin going to go down to 58, 51, 42, whatever it is. OK, which is why I say to you, look at what Bitcoin's doing now in order to understand what it's likely to do in the shorter term, because ultimately it's all about the development of a move. OK, they develop into the all time high. They develop into the all time lows. They develop into and out of ranges. That's what we need to try and keep in our minds. OK, so Bitcoin has now made a great all time high. Thank you very much, Mr. Market Maker. You've been ever so kind to us. Bitcoin for the past two days has done nothing but rise to the upside. Are we going to see the retrace? But how long is the retrace going to last for? That's the key question. You see, Bitcoin right now is holding in and around the daily open of the chart. If you look closer, you can see. Bitcoin is holding in and around the 66, 67,679 range. For my people that are on mobiles and can't see things that clear, let me just change things up for you so you can actually see a clearer view on price. Where are we at? Scales, appearance. We should see. Wait a second. Who's disturbing me in my streams? That's not good. Here we go. Let me change that to yellow. Get things up and running from there. Happy days. Okay, cool. So what can we expect? Well, Asia last night initiates the move to the upside, pumps price up. OK, now we know Asia is quite notorious for setting up the precedence for the rest of the session. OK, and that includes New York. Now, New York itself is actively showing us some interesting behavior, as you can see. We've got, what, it's half eight in the morning in New York right now, give or take. I don't know if I'm correct on my times right there, but please let me know. Now, we're waiting for the New York futures markets to roll out at half past nine New York time. All right. So we are waiting for a Brinks box. We've got this vector candle right here in the chart, which is a point in the chart which they may likely come back up to. But when? That's the key thing. They've had every chance to do so. This move up to the upside right here, which was showing the support of the 50 EMA on the 15 minute time frame, which is the 13 EMA on the hourly, could have been a point that they could have spiked higher, but they chose not to do that. All right. Bitcoin might actually just stabilize and allow the altcoins that are making basic um, setups to move higher. OK. But we've got to be aware of something, guys. There is a vector candle nearby. They have recovered 50 percent of the vector candle right here. But more importantly, what we need to understand is price is somewhat close towards it. So they might bring price back down to this point right here to trigger the same interest that they got from the last pool of liquidity that they came from over here. OK, now we know something. We know that Asia works in conjunction with the UK and or should I say the Europe session, the European session and the US session. We know New York is infamous for its reversals. We may get two reversals today, guys. If you are new to the stream, ladies and gentlemen, you can want access to this platform. Just check out all the links in the description and it will come under platforms and useful downloads. Check it out. It's free to download. But more importantly, make your way over to the Discord. All right. Everything you need is in the description of this video. Go hit us up on the socials. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. OK, so go check that out. But more importantly, if you're going to join the Discord, make sure you follow the section which which says server rules. All right. And you need to react to it. It's at the bottom of that post. Make sure you react to it so that you get access to all the channels. OK, now 
What we need to understand is this. Bitcoin has had a habit of hitting its range daily high. Okay. The 70K zone that I've been expecting Bitcoin to come up towards looks like they are actually coming up towards that point in line of the ADR that Bitcoin travels. Okay. So from the open today, all right, Bitcoin's open from down here. Bitcoin has traveled a maximum of 24,452 pips to the upside. Now, there is a variation on this. They don't always have to hit their ADR to the T. They can go beyond the ADR, okay? And that means to the upside or to the downside, all right? But what you need to be aware of, the ADR, which is the average daily range, okay, helps us understand the intention of the market makers trying to move price in a cyclical fashion. Okay. Now at the start of the week, you can see Bitcoin from here. All right. From the start of the week, which the psychological high was right there. What do we say about the psychological high? Whenever price breaks away from that point, okay, nine times out of 10, it's going to trade away from that range. Now in Forex, they have a habit of trading away from the psychological high and low, but they always tend to try and bring it back somewhat close towards that range to start off the setting of the spread that they initially started at the start of the week. Okay. So Bitcoin has moved away from its psychological ranges. Could we see a retrace back down to this point right here? Is it possible? Because they can. Don't think that they can't because they can. Yes, everyone's talking about Bitcoin is soon getting parabolic. It's going to go make mad gains to the upside. Wonderful. But remember, the idea behind what the market maker does, he provides liquidity for retail traders to buy. At what point is the market maker going to initiate a return on that investment? And this is where the retraces come in, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, this is what you always need to keep in your mind. The retraces are the market makers taking payment on the initial amount of money that they've been giving out to the retail trader to go long because he's been initiating his shorts to the upside. For anybody that saw this blue vector candle forming earlier on in the Hong Kong session would have realized that this is the market maker's attempt towards the high to trap the, the shorts at the highest possible point for them to only bring it back down again. Now we're seeing some interesting behavior by Bitcoin. We can see bright as day that this is a range in the chart where the market makers are spiking price lower and higher, but containing it in this zone because there is an influx of orders coming into the chart. People are trying to grab buying the dip, so to speak, so that they are not in the fear of missing out on Bitcoin hitting an all time high. The sentiment across the board with retail traders and cryptocurrency enthusiasts is high. What a perfect time to reverse price because everyone's money that is in the chart is going to stay committed because they don't want to miss out on Bitcoin gaining movement to the upside. More, on, more importantly, conversations about Bitcoin making 100K, 200K, 500K. Guys, don't fall for the hype. Bitcoin ain't even above 69,000. And why are we thinking about 100K? Don't get me wrong. It's nice to make a prediction on where we are likely to see Bitcoin going in the future. That's great. But then you set yourself up for being biased to a direction. And what if you are biased in a direction of Bitcoin where price is just going to do nothing but pull straight back down? See, when you're fighting with a bias, okay, because everyone's talking about Bitcoin going to 100K, there are people that are not so informed about the idea of trading who are just going to say, you know what, forget it, it's unlikely Bitcoin can come all the way back down to 58 or 63,000 from the point that it is in the chart right now. I'm just going to buy and I'm going to hope that it continues higher because everyone's talking about Bitcoin going higher. We analyze and we make our judgment based on what Bitcoin is doing right now. Right now, Bitcoin from the Asian session hit the previous high and it's pulled back. Okay. I'm not interested in Bitcoin going to 100K from this point. No, I'm interested to see what their intention is from the high from today all the way down to where it is right now. Can I work out if Bitcoin is going to break through this previous high or are we going to see a bit of a retrace back down to the 50 EMA just to regulate things and bring traders back into the fray? That's what I'm looking for. OK. They are Benildo. It's all speculation, my friend. What I'm doing is I'm speaking into speculation because this game is all about speculation. There is no one, okay, that's going to be able to say, yes, this is the story with Bitcoin. It's going to end up here. It's going to end up here. And if it does, congratulations. But I don't like to just base it off, you know, making a prediction and hoping that Bitcoin is going to get to a point. I'm not hopeful with trading. No, I have to look at what they're doing now. Okay, as a short term day trader, guys, that's my goal. 
Now, for those who are holding coins, those who are, you know, the hodlers, the guys who are in the game for the longer term, okay, you guys are sitting very nicely. Happy days. You guys would naturally want a retrace if you're going to be stepping in and getting Bitcoin cheaper, okay? And that cheaper could be 67, 66, or 63, or even 59. It doesn't matter. What we need to understand is this. Bitcoin is a fashionable coin. It's the go-to coin, all right? You want to introduce someone to cryptocurrency? They talk about Bitcoin. That's all they know. So that's where the money is going. Forget about altcoins. Okay? Forget about altcoins. Those aren't the coins that people go to when they step into cryptocurrency in the first instance. I admit, when I stepped into the game of cryptocurrency, the only coins that I was aware of was XRP, Bitcoin, okay, Ethereum, had Litecoin, and I had one token, which was the XYO. That was it. You know, that's all I had. I never knew about Shiba. And obviously, back then, you know, Shiba didn't exist. But co coins like, you know, VeChain, BNB, you know, Tron, all these other coins that have been out and about, okay, and they've been slowly growing. I was not aware of them because when you step into cryptocurrency, you only focus on the coins that all these exchanges are pushing, okay? So using Bitcoin as a gauge to understand people's psychology because the game is psychological and anyone that tells you otherwise is not going to last five minutes in this game. Why? Because when you see price making mad moves to the upside, why does it pull back? Does that mean that the moon boy himself is wanting to make some profit? No. The reason why you see price pulling back from the highs is because that's where the market maker traps the most amount of liquidity on trades that he's been setting up on the way up against the retail trader. Remember, in order to buy, someone has to sell. You can only buy if someone sells the opposite of your contract because you're going to be taking their liquidity when you realize a profit and they're going to be taking your liquidity because the position that they've set up against you, okay, is in profit when you're at a loss. That's the way the business works, okay? So this is what we need to try and get into our minds. Become familiar with the idea of not having a bias in direction. And the only thing that you need to be aware of is momentum. You can see bright as day what's going on here, ladies and gentlemen. The momentum has favored Bitcoin to the upside. Happy days. Great news. Bitcoin is rising. That's what we like to see. And about time Bitcoin starts to rise. Okay? But the same token, what you must be aware of, guys, is you have to maintain the right psychology. If you are in positions that are profitable, pay yourself. There's no good in having a position live on Binance or Bybit and it's in profit. Until you close it, it ain't nothing. It's just dead money sitting for the market maker to take advantage because you will always be trying to work out what point will it continue higher for me to earn more, but what point will it pull back to for me to lose more? Don't put yourself in that position. Always think in abundance. There will always be another trade. When Bitcoin rises, it has to come back down again. That's the basis of it, you know? Let's have a look at what you guys are talking about. What do I think of Bitcoin on the weekly time frame? Okay, let's have a look at Bitcoin on the weekly time frame itself. Now, the weekly itself, yes, it's a nice big extended move to the upside. Happy days. It's in price discovery, guys. Anything that happens from this point on, okay, is all down to the commitment of the retail trader and the market maker matching up that commitment. Always ask yourself, what is the market maker trying to make the retail trader do? That's the first thing you should do when you come to the charts. You have a look at the weekly time frame. You can have a look at the monthly, whatever it is. OK, but all we have done in the past, what, one, two months is move to the upside because this area right here of accumulation, stop hunt rises, pulling price back and what have you. This is where retail traders over the past three months, four months even have been trying to work out if Bitcoin is likely to ever go beyond the 67, 64K, whatever it was. Yeah, the 64,900 zone. Right now, we're looking at Bitcoin to come towards the 70K. But forget that. It's all about Bitcoin going to the 200K. Nah, it's all about the 500K. Do you see what I'm saying? People are not loyal to a price. People don't stick with a certain zone because when price gets to a particular zone and they fulfill it, then you need to start asking yourself, well, what's likely going to happen after this point? It's the same movement from this one point to the next point. So hypothetically, if Bitcoin does hit the 70K zone, okay, what's going to happen with your thinking about Bitcoin then? Everyone seems to have this idea that every time a high is met, okay, Bitcoin's going to come crashing down all because of what happened over here. Okay, well, that happened then. Okay, that doesn't matter. 
Now, most of you guys may be familiar with this. I've dr drawn this out on the, on the MT4 chart, but you can see bright as day that we are coming from what we understand to be a rise, a retrace, and a continuation. Now, this is on the monthly time frame. okay? We are now in this sort of pattern. But remember, okay, it's the monthly. They can whip price up and down before they finalize it. We are going into, what, the 9th right now, 9th of November, and you can see Bitcoin has made some very interesting gains. What point in the month are they going to retrace and then come towards the end of the month to get Bitcoin back up again? That is what we're looking for, okay? Looking on the daily, you've got a green vector candle right there, all right? And you saw from last night, they initiated a move down and then they came straight back up. But the problem is, is Bitcoin still stuck in this range right here? Not liking it. All right. We normally see them retrace back down, but this could be a continuation to the upside on the daily. We need to wait and see. New York have a tendency to set us up with reversals and we need to wait and see if New York does follow through with that. Looking at the chart itself on MT4, we can see that we've got the New York session happening in the next 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. So on that basis, I'm going to have a look at a few altcoins just to put things to bed and have a look at what is moving across the board. So where are we at? Um, let's have a look at the main watch list itself. OK, then who have we got in here? All right. What happened Monday? What happened to Monday? False move. It happened. Monday's false move happened. What day was Monday? Monday the 8th. Okay, then. So this is the 8th. The false move that happened on the Monday, okay, moved price higher and then they retraced it back down. That is the false move. What, do you expect the false move to be a massive drop to the downside and then a nice spike up? That's what we would like to see. Remember, guys, trading is not static. And if you think trading is static, you're going to get surprised. There is no such thing as static movement in the charts. They can vary, they can, the, the variance, guys, that's what it is. There's variation on the theme. That's what it is. Expecting a false move on Monday. Look, they hit the high in the UK session and they pulled straight back for what? One, two, three, four, five, six hours of pulling back. That could have set up a lot of traders to go short. Bang, this massive move up took out all the liquidation points for the guys who went short. Happy days. There was your false move. See, a false move doesn't mean it's going to keep dropping to the downside. No, false move means it goes in the opposite direction of the initial movement from to the upside. And then if it's going to continue higher, it will show its presence and it will move away from that zone. And then Tuesday, we'll see the movement higher. OK, we've seen this movement in the Asian session. It looks like it's marking up higher. So we're going to know if they do mean business and sending Bitcoin back up again. OK, that's what we're waiting for. All right, then. So. Let's have a look. Um, right. The first coin on top of the board. Now, if you guys access the last video I uploaded, um, the altcoin bosses, there's a couple of coins on there that we're going to look at as well. But let's have a look. GRT. There we go. Nice little move to the upside right there in this hour. The US Brink session itself. You can see they've spiked price up. Now, we've got to look at it on the higher time frame to look where we are. You can see they've recovered this previous vector candle right here. There is another zone in the chart that they're likely to come up to, but it may take a little bit of a while, and there may be a few more retraces that may happen. Whenever you see a coin like this, look, GRT is showing a beautiful pattern, guys. Beautiful pattern that is coming out of the range on the daily, okay? Now, you've got to remember, even if on the daily time frame, they could spring price down, up, down here, and then slowly start pumping up and then come back down. And they can do this behavior. This is on the daily time frame. It could take two weeks for us to get to this point in the chart. OK, look at how long it took them to come from 78 cents all the way up to what? One dollar twenty seven. OK, that's what you need to try and keep aware in your minds when you're looking at the chart on the daily. It takes a little bit longer, which means that you need to give your trade room to move as well. All right. Don't be coming and making your decisions off the daily and then setting a really small um, a small stop. You can see how this coin moves on a day-to-day -day basis. Look, look at the wideness of this coin. So wide in its movement, all right? Even coins where they're not um, candlesticks that haven't actually got any vectors, they are pretty big movements, okay? So give the coin a chance to move. If you're going to enter, at, say, for example, you're going to enter at this point in the chart, do not set your stop here. No chance. It's going to get hit. You need to be setting a stop all the way down here. 
Why? Because if it breaks below the 5 and the 13 EMA, you're going to still be in your trade to catch what we understand to be the retrace back up towards it. If it breaks beyond that point, okay, and rises up and retraces back down and bounces further, you've held your trade for the right reason, okay? Even if it does continue lower, if it comes back up and fails to show respect at the 13 EMA after it broke down below it, you're going to then be able to catch your trade to the downside, okay? And you're going to be able to understand what price is going to do from that point and you'll be out of the trade and adding to a new trade at this point to try and capitalize on the move back down. I hope that puts things into perspective for you. Litecoin. Look at Litecoin. If Litecoin's doing that, that only means Ethereum is doing something else. Okay, Litecoin tends to move first before Ethereum. All right, and this is on the daily. All right, if we look at the hourly, you can see things are starting to well, Litecoin is just doing its own thing. It's making its move to the upside. Happy days. If I look at Ethereum for a second, Ethereum does, well, yeah, Ethereum looks like it wants to come back up and bounce up. But I've found that in terms of disparity between Ethereum and Litecoin, Litecoin always moves first and then Ethereum tends to follow. All right, so keep an eye out on that. Let's quickly go back to Bitcoin, see what it's doing. But Bitcoin not doing much. Dash. Oh my days, look at this coin. What a sharp movement. Nice little stop hunt to the downside, shifting back up. Great. Ada. Ada's doing really well. And I've said to you before, when Ada forms a pattern and she breaks away from it, she does a really good job of doing so. Okay, so keep an eye out for Ada. Look at the W formation that has formed right there. You can see bright as day what they're trying to do with Ada. Okay, so just be mindful of that. Let's have a look at what's going on here. All right, then, cool. Let's have a look at what else is moving. Um, ONT, let's have a look. I want to look at Theta as well. ONT has done something great as well. All right, you can see right here, ONT has formed a pattern at the W4, uh, sorry, at the 200 EMA. Formed a pattern at the W formation. <laughs> They've moved price out of the zone, but it has struggled a little bit. So this retrace back down to the 200, to the 50 EMA, sorry, the 13 EMA, could see a continuation up. I think most coins that are coming out of ranges are going to hit their high ADR, but it's all down to what Bitcoin does. Has Bitcoin been moved to this area that it's at right now in initiation for the altcoins to make their move to the upside? Is the dominance of Bitcoin now going to pull back and the altcoins that have been basing and preparing for a move are going to see a move back up again? Looking at, for example, Theta. Look at Theta. Theta's done great. Okay, she's done great, but she hasn't broken out of this zone. You can see she tried to make another move up to that point right there. But it does look like it's going to start showing some, I don't know, it may even pull back ever so slightly because this move just looks like a stop hunt rise, stop hunt low, just to contain the orders. We could see a little bit of a retrace, but that's all down to what New York does with Bitcoin. That's what it's all based on, guys. Is Bitcoin going to break out from this zone and continue higher to make the hit towards the range daily high which is what we're witnessing right here on the chart okay bitcoin from its open has only achieved 23000 pips to the upside its adr is 28377 so we've got another 5000 more pips for bitcoin to move up which will take us towards the range daily high so could new york initiate a stop hunt rise and then move bitcoin down or are we just going to break through and hit that 70k zone? Because I've been waiting for 70k, guys. Well, actually, 70,500. All right? I'm waiting for this zone to get taken by Bitcoin. But will it be taken in this session today? Who knows? We need to work out if this holding of the 50 EMA right here is going to hold. And all you can do, ladies and gentlemen, is this. When you come to a set of confluences in the chart, all right? Don't keep adding too many confluences because you're going to miss the move. The idea is you pay to play and understand where you could get out on based on the amount of money that you are prepared to lose. But do not go into the chart thinking about how much money you're going to make because you will then go blind with how much money you are losing just to make that amount of money that you're desiring to make on one trade. Keep yourself aware of what you can lose before you focus on what you can win. It's the only way you can focus in this game. Because we can cloud our judgment on the likeliness of Bitcoin coming up. See, that's the problem with leverage. Leverage means that if I were to make an entry right now, okay, at 125x and put the house on it, any move to the upside is going to see me a very handsome return. But I'm too blinded by what, much, what money I could make. What about the money I could lose? 
oh, it's not going to go back to, you know, don't worry about it. Steve ain't going to dump on you this time. Well, guys, I ain't going to take that. I can't ignore the fact that I could lose a lot of money if it just does decide to pull back ever so sharply. All right. So try and always keep some humility about your trading, guys. Focus on the success of the trade as opposed to the end result of the trade. The success of the trade is when you enter into a trade and it moves in your favor, congratulations, you have been accurate with your entry. That is the true currency in trading. The success of the trade, the accuracy of your entry, how much of a minimal drawdown you're going to see in the chart for you to realize a return in your investment. You know? Tino, is Algo's retrace a coconuts price, please? Tino, I'm desperate and clueless. Quick, quick, coconuts. What the hell's coconuts? What is coconuts? Solana preparing for something. Let's have a look at Solana. Let's have a look at Solana. Where's Solana? Sol. Now, Sol's been doing something really interesting. Okay. The problem that we've got with Sol is this. We have got ourselves what we understand to be one zone right here, another zone up here, and another zone here that by principle ladies and gentlemen does look like a potential m formation or a head and shoulders better for the word okay but what you need to understand guys is this solana could actually come back up because it has a good job of holding certain zones in the chart okay you look at the pools of liquidity right here that they've bounced away from could we be seeing the same thing here but the fact that they've spiked the upside right here okay and pulled straight back He's just telling me something is brewing. Solana tends to have a habit of hitting the 200 EMA and basing. Look at what she did last time. All right. Now you've got to look at it from a market maker's perspective. Okay. If he's able to bring Solana back down towards the 200 EMA and accumulate a bag of orders in this area, you don't think he's going to try and do the same again here. But at a higher point. That's what we need to be aware of. Let's look at what else has been moving up. Okay, then. Um, Neo's been doing really well. Look at this for a coin. Neo's done really well. And this coin really, it trades really well. Just look. Slow trend is the true trend, ladies and gentlemen. And if you notice when the move is rising to the upside, you're seeing just only a certain amount of vector candles. But when it comes towards the highest point in the chart where the market maker is going to show his presence, you see the larger vector candles. Presence one, two... And three hits to the high. This could be another coin that could actually move higher based on this retrace right here. But like I said, it's all down to what Bitcoin decides to do. Because Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP have been moving in sync. Okay. Before the disparity was Ethereum was moving upwards. Bitcoin was holding and XRP was holding. Now all of a sudden everything is moving. So are we witnessing new money coming into the charts? Which takes me over to the totals. Okay. Okay. The market cap for cryptocurrency across the board. We are nearly at $3, three trillion, guys. $3 trillion is coming into cryptocurrency. I've said it before. Cryptocurrency is likely to surpass Forex. Now, Forex trades $6.5 trillion on a day-to-day -day basis. Cryptocurrency right now is halfway there. Nearly halfway there. Could cryptocurrency you know, surpass Forex? Most definitely. And it's all based on what? Money coming in, the psychology of money being put into the charts, people making commitments on trading, people making beliefs come to life by buying certain coins, certain projects. That's reflected in this chart, ladies and gentlemen. Big free back up. Let's have a look at BNB. See, BNB, see, see, I don't like this when BNB just starts formulating this sort of behavior, man. I don't like it. I need to see BNB break out higher. I mean, we've got a retrace here and a potential pattern forming. But until New York steps in, I ain't going to be considering anything until New York shows its hand. OK, we are expecting it to be um, a bit of a retrace somewhere. But what if the retrace has been done? What if that's it now? The retrace is over. We could see price continuing higher. We just need to be mindful of it, guys. Just keep an eye out on the behavior of coins across the board. OK. Right, let's have a look over here for the altcoin bosses. What coins are actually moving over there? Helium. Helium seems to be doing okay as well. Let's have a look at that. Great move, but it's pulling back. What time is it? It's 2 p.m. New York Brinks. 
on its way. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth. Bitcoin likely to come up towards the range daily high and spike back down. Let's see what New York has in store for us. We need to zoom in and have a look at that. Have a look at that. Here we go. So we're going, oh, we've had a bit of a spike in behavior right now. So I need to bring Bitcoin up just to see what's happening there. Let me just have a look at VeChain for a second. VeChain is looking really well from its move to the upside. We've got the US Brink session right now, guys. It's all literally based on what Bitcoin does next, guys. That's all I'm interested. I'm interested in what Bitcoin does because right now it's what everyone is looking at. Okay. So here we go. 68K has been tapped. Oh, they've spiked up. Here we go. Let's look at Bitcoin on the smaller time frame to understand the behavior of New York. Here we go. So big green vector candle. Re ah, recovery of the vector candle zone right here to the T. So we need to be mindful, guys. Keep an eye out on what could be happening. There could be a little bit of a pattern that has played out from here. Little W formation on the five minute time frame where price has made a move up. Are we going to see a retrace and bounce back away from that point to make another attempt to the upside? Let's see if the market makers are going to be kind to us. But the problem that I've got is this, is we've had several hits to the highs, okay? And we've come down to the 200, but the 50 and the 200 EMA on the five minute time frame are really close to each other. So we could see a little bit of a retrace, but on the hourly, it's screaming something, man. Such a big move in price to the upside and it's not achieved anything. Could we see the retrace happening from this session? Is New York going to take a little bit of profit? Or are we just going to see a nice move continue back up again? This is what we need to do, guys. We need to sit tight and wait. Until the 5 and the 13 EMA have been broken, all right? Then everything is still favorable to the upside because what they could do is just keep Bitcoin in this range, okay? And move the altcoins, all right? And the altcoins see their success to the upside, all right? And then when it's time for the altcoins to pull back, Bitcoin will start making its move again. That's what I'm seeing in light of the fractional disparity across the board, guys. That's what I'm starting to see. Oh, yes. Let's have a look at XRP for my guy. Here we go. XRP. See, XRP is starting to break down, man. Look. You can see it bright as day. You've got a perfect M formation right there on XRP. Look at that. Let me just get the pattern up. Let me just wait for that. Here we go. Rise. Drop rise up again drop back down are we going to see a bit of a retrace continuation to the downside is that what is likely to happen to test at key moving averages this is what we're waiting for guys i'm doing xrp right now my brother has the new york brinks changed because they have their daylight savings yesterday great question kid great question great question one more push all time high then we go down ethereum target 4892 Big boy shorts. <laughs> what you've got to be aware of, guys, is New York has this tendency to just surprise us. <coughs> Excuse me. It does a great job of surprising us. But what we need to be aware of, guys, is just don't be quick to jump the gun. OK, let the trade come to you at all times. Whenever price comes away from a zone, this is what you need to keep in your mind. Whenever price comes away from a zone, always wait for the retrace because you're going to know the validity of this move to the upside and whether it's going to hold. Because if it moves to the upside, if it retraces and breaks beyond it, you know where that money was going. It was setting up for the shorts. But then if you do see price make a move to the upside, okay, and retrace back down and hold and show notable volume coming in, you want to see vector candles appearing in these zones right here with them coming away from the zone because they don't want to allow the liquidity to be released to the downside because if they do that, they would have allowed the retail traders to get into their shorts and get money from those shorts. They don't want to go, they don't want the retail trader to realize a return. What's happening right now with Bitcoin and Ethereum and candles across, um, coins across the board is everyone's missing out on big moves so FOMO's kicking in people want to get involved what's the perfect time for the market maker to sell longs at the highest possible point which is designed to get his shorts filled in as well you know so just keep an eye out on that guys just focus on the psychology of why price moves in one direction against the next for all we know guys they could just explode price higher and that would be okay but like I said, 5 and 13 EMA are going to give us the understanding of momentum in the charts. If they start breaking down, you only work that out by looking at price on the smaller time frames. Okay, what are we starting to see? 
5 and 13 EMA are still above price on the 15 minute time frame. That's good news, but price is pulling back. They tried to make a break away from the zone, but failed to break above this point. What does that mean? Okay. There's nothing down here for them to really come back down to. So the next pool of liquidity could be this point right here in the chart. That would be healthy from an all-time high. Let's have a look at DOT. Let me just put up this chart here. Where's DOT? Let's have a look. DOT, 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 DOT. Here we go. DOT, what's DOT doing? See, look, DOT's been pulling back and that was one of the bigger gainers. Okay. Dot is in, look, come back down to the vector candle. Are they now preparing for a move back up? I believe Bitcoin's going to pull back and all these altcoins that have seen moves to the upside and have pulled back based on Bitcoin's movement are going to probably try and come back up again. Dot could come back up towards this point right here in the chart. Now, this is where we are going to test. Here we go. Here's the move. You've got an M formation up here, hypothetically. Price drops down, retrace, continuation down, comes back up again. Then they pull price aggressively back down. They're going to come try and test this zone right here and then potentially try and come back down to this point in the chart. Okay, that's what we need to try and establish what we can expect Dot to do next. And this was what I was just talking about on XRP. Okay, when XRP makes a move out and it pulls back down again, we're going to know if this move is designed to trap traders to go long thinking they're buying the dip. They could bring it back down again. So keep an eye on that, my friend. Okay. Matic. Matic's done really well to say the, let's say the least, but now it's starting to pull back down. Look at that. Look at that. Massive formations of patterns coming in the chart. Look at this, man. We've got one hit, two nothing's happened here but they look like they could be forming a pattern right here okay but you've got to be careful sometimes patterns look like they're set, getting set up but they could actually be setting us up for failure because if you look at the chart itself you can see there's some liquidity down here in matic that they may want to come back down to they seem to be respecting all the liquidity pools on matic so just be mindful of that last week's low could be something they could come back down to before they actually continue with any more accumulation with matic so keep an eye out on that all right Let's have a look. I need to keep an eye out on that right there. Let me just bring up some more charts. Okay, then. Where's my mouse? There it is. Okay, Bitcoin. Back to Bitcoin again. Man, I need to sort this computer out. Bitcoin's pulling back. Okay. Let me get rid of these drawings in the chart here. So it's nice and clear for us. Okay, then. So it seems as though that the New York session seems to be following suit. Okay. Got a little bit of a pullback right here. That's on the 15 minute time frame. Sorry if it's blown your eyes out. Where are we at? Here we go. Stop hunt rise just before the New York session. This is now the US Brinks box. So we need to see. Ah, they've come back up to that point and tapped that liquidity right there, ladies and gentlemen. They did it. They came back to that pool of liquidity up there. Okay, so now that means something else is going to happen. We just need to keep an eye out on the charts, ladies and gentlemen. Keep an eye out. Something is brewing. New York might surprise us with something. Yes, fear and greed are the biggest movers. Yes, they are. You know? How you doing, Bella? What's good? How many of you in the room? A thousand of you in the room. Let's do some housekeeping, guys. Let's pump the algo. 357 likes against a thousand people in the room show some mad love to the stream guys and like it if you are new to the channel be sure to subscribe and catch up with us every single day we are streaming twice a day i'll be streaming again later on tonight at 10 p.m okay and then wednesday and thursday streaming twice a day 2 p.m and 10 p.m in the evening to summarize what's been going on across the board so we're giving you the heads up on what we can expect bitcoin to do in this new york session and we understand new york to be quite notorious for reversals which is why things are a little bit quiet i'm waiting for the futures market to show its hand that's what i'm waiting for the futures market to do tino thoughts on the record high leverage ratio and the open interest people are pumping money okay well, in order for money to come into the chart, market maker needs to give people a reason to step in. Mad love to you, Jono. When people come to the charts, guys, that's when the market maker fulfills the obligation. See so what you're seeing, seeing here, open interest and high leverage use is being engaged right now. There is a bag 
of liquidations in the charts sitting as dead money. Right now, the market maker is testing people. He's testing the retail traders commitment because if the market maker is allowing retail traders to go long at this point in the chart, he may bring price back up one more time, even trigger another all time high and then sharply move it back down because he needs to keep the retail traders committed in their play in their trades. OK, because those retail traders are putting liquidation points in the charts, as you can see from the yellow lines. These are examples of liquidation points. OK, and they're all over the place. This is dead money to the market maker. He can then open up new trades based on releasing the liquidity from the retail traders liquidation points. Because remember, a liquidation point is still an order. If you've gone long, your liquidation point is all the way down here. It's going to activate it as a position. It's going to close the long. OK. That's an order for the market maker. He can then bring price down towards these points in the chart hypothetically to initiate a transaction that transaction hitting the liquidity liquidation points for the retail traders could help him open up longs at lower prices for free so he's not actively using any money as such it's costing him nothing to do that because he's using the liquidity that you guys are giving the market maker as a liquidation point because he can see those liquidation points okay and he's using that liquidity to open up trades against you by releasing that money there OK, remember, you can only buy when someone sells. When someone's liquidation points gets hit, when they're in a long, they are selling. So the market maker does what? He buys it back. He buys your liquidation point and releases that liquidity and uses it to open his longs on the move back down, encouraging all the retail traders to start going short because Bitcoin is dropping. And then before you know it, he reverses price back up and then price shifts away out of the zone and throws traders off guard. That is how money moves in this game, ladies and gentlemen. And then you'll notice that we're not even talking about any technical analysis, no Fibonacci's, no boxes, no nothing. It's all understanding the interest of traders at one point against the next. And what are the chances of the market maker taking his money back from this previous move to the upside? For all we know, Bitcoin could blast out to the upside. Happy days for anyone holding Bitcoin. Anyone that's buying the dip, happy days. But you've just got to be mindful of the psychology of what's going on in the charts. Man, am I going to take a breath or what? I need to take my inhaler. Okay, Tino, you reckon I'm too greedy running for 1.1550? If you've got money in the chart, bro, and there's an opportunity for you to pay yourself, you feel much more better about paying yourself than knowing that you left money in the chart and it went down to a small amount when you knew that you could have closed at a higher amount. Have a conversation with yourself, bro. Work it out. You know? It's not about holding on to hero trades. Okay? That's not the point. It's about paying yourself on trades that you make. That's the idea, guys. The idea is to always get yourself involved in paying yourself. Get used to the idea of paying yourself. Because that's what it's about, man. Because you know what the irony is? When you've paid yourself from a trade, you forget about that trade. You're on to the next bad boy. Yeah? No one has ever been loyal to a position that they closed. I guarantee to you. You close along in profit, you're looking at shorts or you're looking for another move back up. So what I'm saying to you, the history of the emotions that you experienced with the last profitable trade, you don't need to care about it anymore because you earned your P from that. Done. Next trade. When I place a trade, I'm looking forward to the next trade. And that's whilst I've got a trade on. And that's why I'm always prepared to cut a loss and get ready to change direction if I'm in the wrong direction. That's what it is for me. If I'm in a trade and it goes against me, I ask myself, how much money am I prepared to pay the market maker to prove that I'm wrong? Well, I try and give the market maker a major discount and I only give him a small amount of my in of my income as such. Of my capital, sorry. Yeah. I don't want him to have full scale on my on my capital. He gets major discount. And that discount is like not even 10%. That's what I'm saying. I give the market maker about four or five percent. That's all his discount is, nothing else. Some people are happy to give the market maker 50% before they realize they're wrong. But if you got you got to understand it like this, guys. If you keep your trade loss small, 
you'll know that you're in the wrong side of the trade and you'll be able to quickly get back in because the break even from a 4% isn't much. You don't need to see much of a gain to get back to break even and realize another positive return. But if you're going into a trade and you risk 20% and you're cutting your loss at 20%, you've got to make a 40% move. You've got to see price do some really big move for you to even break even. Well, how long is that going to take, man? Does that mean you're going to start adding more money and expose more liquidity just so you can make that return quicker? Nah, man, don't get caught in that game, guys. Do not get caught in that game. Do you move stop loss order up as a profitable position? Keeps moving up. Correct, damn. I do move stop losses in the sense where I put them into take profit sections as well. So I can lock in profit and I don't do anything else from that. I, I only move the stop loss in relation to its movement in price or in the favor of my direction. I don't like a trailing stop loss. I just It's like a manual trailing stop loss, basically. That's what it is. Okay. All right, then. Man. What time is it? I have my daughter to go and get very shortly, guys. So... What's going on? Can I check? All right. Is this not peak formation on the 15 minute time frame? This is what we're trying to establish. Is this peak formation for Bitcoin? Is it peak formation? All right. What's it doing? See, guys, look, the, this is what I'm looking for now. Bitcoin's pulling back. Altcoins are moving up. All the altcoins that have been making bases. Let's just pull up random altcoins that are making bases. Okay. Then you can see it's actively hitting that 800 EMA without hesitation. One, two, three hits. Are we seeing another move back up by Dent? Let's see. Um, FTM. Let's have a look at FTM. FTM sort of following Bitcoin's behavior. Okay. Um, let me get the altcoins watch list. One inch, actually. One inch is pumping up. I don't trust it. Algo. Let's have a look at Algo. Coming back to the retrace, testing the 50 EMA, rejecting the 50 EMA, stop hunt rise in the US Brinks. Don't like that. I do not like that. Alice, what's Alice doing? Alice is taking a battering, man. But Alice had a good run, man. Look at that. Alice is pulling back. So you're going to see some altcoins pulling back, which by principle could mean Bitcoin could be coming back up ever so shortly. Let's see. Are we seeing the retrace? What's going on? I need to look at Bitcoin on the smaller time frames to really understand what's going on. Here we go. So we've got a W formation forming off the 800 EMA. 800 EMA bounces off the one minute time frame are brilliant strategies, man. They are quick games. I'll be doing this in the masterclass session for the Patreons, guys. So just be aware we're going to be talking about scalping in that session and putting it all together but i really want to dive into a little bit more on scalping off the 800 ema because i touched up on it but i didn't really touch up on it too much so i want to dive into a little bit more detail bitcoin is at yesterday's high pulled straight back now we just need to wait and see if we do get a bit of a pullback down here i just i think it's going to come and test the daily open one more time we've had this stop hunt rise happening right here on the one minute time frame failing to go back up Let's see if New York are going to be kind to us and see a continuation higher or are we going to get the overall retrace across the board? So just keep yourselves aware, guys. If you've got profit, pay yourselves, okay? Because they're working the ranges right now, guys, okay? They are working the ranges. Can you explain why you don't trust one inch move to understand? Okay, then let me bring up one inch just to help you understand what I don't trust about it. Okay, look. They keep coming up towards these previous pools of liquidity on the time frame with one inch. Look, let me put things into perspective. One inch has seen a massive move to the upside and everybody knows that they were going to come back down and retrace that point. We've spoken about it. OK, and they've recovered near enough all of that vector candle and now they are consolidating in this area right here. Now, we need to ask ourselves, what are they preparing for? Because we do have these pools of liquidity up here. OK, so let's pull up the whole and a half numbers. You can see that we've got four and a half dollars right here, which seems to be the point in the chart where they're building most of the liquidity pools, where they're hitting price lower to build the longs and then they're snapping it back up again. Look, aggressive movement down, aggressive movement down and shifting back up. The next aggressive movement down happened here and then price has come up. But the problem is, is they are recovering the vector candles straight away. OK. What I'm not seeing is I'm not seeing green vector candles that are appearing on its way up for us to believe that they could continue higher and then come back down again. So do I trust this move? I don't really trust it. But could we see a little bit more favor to one inch to the upside? Yes, because they could come back up and recover these vector candles right here. It's whatever it does in this zone right here, which is going to reveal what it's planning on doing. 
all right? If they're gonna move Bitcoin down and move the alts higher, one inch could actually break higher from that point. But if they do move Bitcoin higher and the alts get held, then one inch could actually just base out and travel in this zone right here, okay? The only way we can work out if it's going to actually make that move higher is to pay attention to Bitcoin pulling back. And then if price does break away from the moving averages, because you can see bright as day that the moving averages are pretty lag, not laggard, but they're static. They're not doing much. They're compressed. There's no clear smoothness in price moving up or down. It's just a trappy zone. All right. Look at the spikes to the upside, trapping the liquidity, bringing it back down again. So these are the sort of behaviors you want to be, pay be paying attention to, to understand if a coin is going to break out from a range or not. That's what you need to be aware of. Keep an eye out on where they're doing all this manipulative behavior below or above key notable areas. OK, this is what I'm not liking. The fact is that they're moving price higher and the vector candles are appearing above this area right here not below so you see more of them now appearing here as opposed to what they were doing here so could that mean they could bring price back down lower again you know that's the question that we need to have bitcoin going to 200k i don't care about bitcoin going to 200k i'm a realist i need to look at what bitcoin is doing now to understand what bitcoin is going to do at 200k let's break 70 let's break 70k before we can think about bitcoin going to 200k OK, as you can see right there, New York session. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the M candles themselves. All right. So look, watch this, guys. These are M candles on this platform, which give you the one hour candle. OK, on the one minute time frame and how it develops into the candle. And you can see from this candlestick right here, they initiated the move down and now they've come back up. But they came back up, initiated a stop hunt rise. And now it looks like at the start of a new hour candle, price is now starting to pull back. OK, there is a point of liquidity in the chart that they may realize over here, which is a short term movement to the downside. So we've got to be mindful of that. But as I said to you guys, what point are the market makers going to come back in to move Bitcoin higher if the intention is to go higher? Remember, you can add as many confluences as you can. Ideally, you need to pay to play to understand your understanding of the strategy and where you think price is going to go next. That's what's important. OK. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. Be sure to like and subscribe, guys. Anything that you need in relation to um, uh, any links or any platforms that you might want to use, like the indicators on TradingView or indicators on MT4, everything you need is in the description of this video. You can download it. It's free of charge to do so. OK, all the links that you need are provided for in the description of the video but other than that guys mad love and respect to all of you okay be sure to like and subscribe if you are new and make sure you pass by tonight for the evening stream other than that guys trade safe think well and always remind yourself what is the market maker trying to make the retail trader think go have yourselves a wonderful day guys take care yourselves peace